everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Dennis Rowland Show, sponsored by the friendly people over at North Oaks Health System, located here in Hammond, just off of Veterans Boulevard. I'm Marv Boyce, alongside Lions head coach, Coach Dennis Rowland. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you, Marv. In the next half hour, we're going to take a look at this first and second half highlights from this week's game against Texas State. We're going to look at this week's big play of the week. We're going to take a scouting report looking forward to this week's game against Northwestern State, and we're going to look at the player profile segment with defensive lineman Derek Mincy. First of all, Coach, Conference opener against Texas State. They were picked top of the conference. How do you think we did for our first conference opener? Well, you know, first of all, I think uh, Texas State's got an outstanding football team, and uh, their quarterback takes them to another level. Uh, he didn't play against us last year, and I think the people who came to the game Saturday night probably got a good bird's eye view of why he's been selected to play in the Hula Bowl. And you know, I, you know, they're doing a good job. They got 28 seniors, and they're doing a good job now. I was proud of the effort my team brought forth. Uh, we played toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and uh, it, to me you know and, and to everybody on our sideline we thought that we were in it right to the very end uh, and, and our players never quit playing uh, it was a very intense a very emotional football game the kind of football game that you're going to play week in and week out in this conference and so I thought that uh, uh, there's some things I wish we'd have done better but uh, when you play up and you play one of the top teams uh, like I said before you make them make mistakes or they make you make mistakes and uh, we're still emerging. I think I still feel good about our team. I still think we got a chance to be a real good football team. And I think, like I told the players after the ball game, nothing has changed in terms of my goals for this team. We just got to continue to to work hard and, and take care of the little things and find ways to get the, the football in the end zone a little bit earlier. And defensively, find ways to stop them on third and long. We we self-inflicted a few times when it was third and long and gave them opportunities. But again, you play in one of the top teams in the country and definitely one of the top teams in the conference. And those things are going to happen sometimes. Well, I know right off the back, I think the defense looked really well. I know we had a penalty right off the back, but they were definitely in the backfield a lot. How do you think defense did overall in the game? Well, you know, I was very, I'm always proud of the way our defense plays. They play hard. They play with enthusiasm. They get a lot of people at the point of attack. Uh, what we got to do a better job is we got to get off the field. Uh, we, Coach Lucas and, and our defensive guys did a great job of putting them in a fourth down situation. Three, would have, basically, it would have been three and out, and then we roughed the punter. Um, they got a first down. That ended up being, a, instead of a three and out, that ended up being a 13-play drive. Uh, we go on the field, and we one, two, three, punt. Uh, they come back out, and uh, we do three and out on the next time, which is really good. Uh, offensively, we go back out, and we struggle three and out again, and they start another 13-play drive. And, and there was another situation where we had them in third down and long, and uh, we roughed their quarterback. It gives them another first down. So. That's where we got to do a better job. I'm you know, real proud of the effort by our defense. But at that point, at the end of that point, they've run 29, uh, 29 offensive plays to our six. And, uh, you know, the blame there goes a little bit above ways. You can't, you know, offensive, we got to get drives going. And then uh, when we got them in those third and longs, we got to keep them off the field. We did have some injuries, just, uh, significant injuries on the offensive side of the ball. We had a couple injuries in the backfield. You had Josh Taylor out at wide receiver. Robbie Skates did step up, had seven catches. Career game for him. How do you think uh, injuries fit in on, on the factor of the game here? Well, you know, injuries are uh, are always tough, and, and good football teams find ways to overcome them. And the thing we talked all week to our players about was injuries become opportunities for players to step up. And Robbie did that. Robbie stepped up. I've said since I came back as a head coach, I've said that Robbie has a chance not only to be a playmaker but to be a future leader for our team. And because he plays the game hard, he plays. He's a really intense player on the field. He wants the ball to come to him. He wants to make catches, and he had a real big game. Hutch had a big game. Um, I, you know, the injuries, uh, we certainly missed Josh. There's things he could have done that would have helped us. Uh, the running back situation early in the ball game, again, we go into a game uh, worried about running the football because we don't have our playmakers on the field at running back. And finally, late in the first half, I, I, I was really, you know, it's, it's a, it's a catch-22, but do I put Mario in, and if he re-injures that leg, he's out for three or four more weeks. I finally put him in and eased into it, and he did a good job. And so I got some confidence in leaving him in there. And even by his presence on the field, gave them something to think about. But uh, we've got to overcome those injuries. And, and again, we've got to have other players that step up. If you want to be a playmaker, step up. If you want to get on the field, uh, step up. And I want players who want the football to come to them and bust themselves, uh, work hard to get, get themselves in position to, uh, to get the ball coming to them. What do you really think are some key factors really in a game that could have turned it either way? Well, I, you know, I think that uh, uh, right before halftime, we, we have a nice drive going. And I think if we punch that one in, uh, you know, that, that would have probably helped us a lot. 
Uh, we, we, I elected not to go for the field goal there. I know probably people had a question about why I did that, but it's a gut call, and uh, you know you second guess yourself. But I really didn't think it was going to be a three-point ball game. I felt like we needed to make touchdowns at that point in the ball game. The one thing we did do a good job of, we came out of the locker room. This is the fourth week in a row that we've done that. I don't know if I've ever been part of a program where your offense came out of the locker room four weeks in a row and took the opening drive down for a touchdown. So that's something really positive. We're making some adjustments at halftime where uh, our players are coming out with uh, maybe even a little bit more commitment and rhythm, and we take it down and we score. Um, I, I think probably the, the key point in the ball game, uh, again, you know, great effort by our players, great effort by our defensive players, but when we take the opening drive of the second half down and score and make it a 12-6 ball game, they answered with a touchdown, and that's, that's always tough because now – You've just gotten that shot in your arm. Everybody on that sideline is juiced up and ready. And uh, we had them in some third and longs on that drive, I think. And so they answer with a touchdown. Well, we come right back out and drive right back down the field and get a field goal. And uh, they answered that, I think, with another score as well. So that's probably was the breaking point in the ball game for us. Well, let's check out those first half highlights. It's going to be brought to you by the Caboose with locations here in Hammond as well as Independence. Let's take a look. <laughs> First of all, uh, this quarterback they have is probably one of the best we've seen in a while. He's a great athlete and making plays happen, and their defense does a real good job right off the bat of containing him. Uh, put good pressure on him, good contain. Uh, good, good coverage here by our defensive secondary and putting us in a putting him in a uh, punting situation. And we get called for roughing the punter there, and uh, we really should have probably had uh, had it blocked. It got a guy real close to blocking it. Guy got a one guy got a little antsy and ended up roughing him, and so they get a first down and, and continue the drive, and it ends up being about a 13 play drive. And our defense continued to play real good down the stretch. We just got to get off the field, uh, uh, find a way to stop them, stop them on those third and long situations, and. A lot of people playing really hard and playing really good against the number one ranked defense and uh, number one ranked team in the uh, conference. Pinky Harden are making a big play there on the running back. Thought the running back was a really good football player. Go along with the quarterback as well. One thing you'll see is a lot of green shirts pursuing around, getting to the football, and Orlando with Christian there making a real big tackle. Jay Fennelson, company making that tackle. Does a little play action fake. We got good pressure on him and cut here and ends up almost getting a tackle. And uh, David Daniels coming down with the pick there. We end up punting it back to him and they get another drive going that ended up being them. Uh, all right, because I think we got them three and out on the next drive. And then they uh, big tackle right here by uh, David as well. David's playing real well, been playing real well for us, moving. From defensive back to Willie linebacker. Gonna hit Sam Savoy, the freshman out of Georgia. He's a real tough kid, and seeing boys back and get the extra yard there. That's what you want to see your backs do, fight for that extra yardage. Trey's got good, pro good protection there. He just kind of gets a little antsy there and ends up dumping it off to Robbish Gates. Robbish Gates had a real big game for us, filling in for uh, Josh Taylor, and uh, we're real proud of the effort he gave us. They get the ball back, we end up punting it back to them. Good, good. Good, uh, uh, Carlina McChristian sort of and company coming in there and putting good pressure on the quarterback. And um, again, this drive ended up being about 13 plays, and um, we had them in some third and long situations. And those are things again we got to get better at. Great job our defense there, getting them for a minus yardage. It's David and. A lot of people at the point of attack. And that was one of the things I was really scared of playing this team is run, the way they run that option out of the shotgun and the quarterback scrambling around. Sometimes it's hard to get a lot of people at the point of attack. But I uh, thought we did a pretty good job of that. They missed the, extra, they missed the field goal there. And we're feeling pretty good right now. Offensively, we come out. We're coming off uh, deep in our own territory. And we take a shot and uh, just a little bit underthrown, uh, maybe just a little bit more on the ball. Maybe Felton might have had a big, big completion there. Yeah. 
We're in the second quarter now, and again, their defense uh, playing real aggressive. Putt almost, I thought Putt's going to come down with a pick there. He gets a tip on him. And uh, that's something linebackers and DBs live for. Lobby Skates on a nice catch here. Came up just a little bit short. So we end up punting back to him. Good pressure here by uh, inside, so the quarterback scrambles around and he's running around back there. And you just got to be really disciplined. It makes you, it's really tough on your secondary to stay on their uh, receivers. And I think you can see here why this guy's an All American going to play in the Hula Bowl. They break one on, one on us up in here. We just get out of position and uh, they get their first touchdown. And we come back and Trey's avoid some pressure back there and they finally pin him down. We had a secondary guy bust coverage there, something defense works on every day and uh, just got a little out of position and uh, when he busts that coverage, this is what happens, it results in a touchdown. So now we're down by two touchdowns and we finally uh, we get Mario in the ball game, and he gives us a little bit of spark. Mario running about 75, 80% of his capability. But he gives us just a little bit of spark, and um, Jaron Pierce catches a nice one. Good job by Trey dumping it off to him. And now we kind of get us a little drive going. Seems like we've woken up back there. Trey scrambles around, hits Robbie Skates for a big catch here, and keep those sticks moving. And Good job by Trey. Everybody's covered, so he gets us a couple of positive yards here. Well, that was your first half highlights brought to you by the Caboose with locations here in Hammond as well as Independence. Coach, you said uh, offense needs to come out with a little higher tempo. Do you think coming out 13 nothing, coming out of the locker room, that you know you're still in the game at this point? Well, I, you know, first of all, we, we we felt like that we needed to pick up the tempo in the first half, and um, we uh, we went no huddle right from the beginning of the ball game, and I thought we were going to be able to do that. We ended up going three and out, three and out, and that hurt us a lot. And again, as I said earlier in the show, by the time we've run six plays, they've run 29 plays, and uh, you know, so you know, that hurts your rhythm. We got to, you know, we and and you're not uh, whether it's it's offense. We got to pick up the tempo. Defense get off the field. It doesn't really matter. We got to get on the field offensively. And we got to move the football and we got to get first downs. And we didn't do that. Once we got Mario in the game right before halftime, we established a little bit of rhythm. We got some confidence going. And I thought coming off the field at halftime, I felt better. I thought that really helped us. I thought we had a little bit of a shot in the arm, although you, you've got a 13-point deficit. But the thing we told our players at halftime was we've been in this situation before twice. We've been down at halftime. And we've come out of the locker room and, and put ourselves back in position to win the ball game. And so I think our experience of doing that, I think the fact that our players are not quit quitting, they're, they're competing, uh, they believe. Uh, I think that was a positive and a plus. And so coming out of the second half, we were able to get into some rhythm and tempo. Well, let's check out those second half highlights. It's going to be brought to you by the Hammond Nursing Home located at 501 Old Covington Highway here in Hammond. Let's take a look. Come back out of halftime and a um, little pressure in here, but uh, Trey avoids the rush. And good job by, uh, I believe it's Hutch Gonzalez here, just what we call scramble drill. We work on that every day. Quarterback gets in trouble. Just keep running and be patient. And Trey does a good job. He, uh, Hus gets behind the defender. And tell you, Trey, um, Hus does a really good job of catching that football when he drops in. I'm real proud of him. And um, a little pressure up the middle. And a uh, little, little tip drill here. Uh, again, uh, you can call it luck, call it whatever you want. But when, when people are busting trying to make plays, uh, we're looking for playmakers, get playmakers on the field. And, Hutch wants to be a playmaker, and he gets around there, and Jamal would tip the ball, and uh, he catches it for the first touchdown. Gave us a lot of excitement. Our defense now comes back on the field, and um, we, we're down now. We missed the extra point, so we're down by one touchdown, 12-6, or 13-6, and everybody's feeling pretty good about it and uh, getting a lot of people at the point of attack. But um, they get a little drive going here. David Daniels making a the tackle there. Um, And they end up coming back down the field and scoring on us and put it at uh, 20 to 6. So we come back on offense. Here's a nice catch by Hutch. And uh, Ted Hutch had a big ball game. That touchdown drive, first drive of the second half, is the fourth time we've played four ball games in the fourth game in a row that our offense has come out of the locker room and drove the first drive down for a touchdown. So 
we start wanting to do that the first half, we may have a chance to be pretty good. Here, uh, Felton, I thought he made this catch and then drops it and ends up recovering it, but uh, officials ruled it uh, incomplete. That was, a, that was a tough call right there. But here, a uh, little pressure up inside and tries avoiding the rush, does a nice job, gets us a good, good move right there, gets us down inside the 10. We end up selling for a field goal on that drive. So now, coming out the locker room, offensively, we've, we've taken the first two drives on long drives and came up with some points. We're uh, scored at this point 20 to 9, and defense is back on the field trying to stop this All American quarterback. He's a uh, pretty good. We got good pressure on him right there, and you see how elusive he is. But tell you what, uh, we just keep keep coming after him, man. Pinky Hardeman, we're real proud of the guy. And the good news, he's just a junior. Freddie King really played good. Uh, real proud of Freddie and good job that he did. And they score again, so now we got a, we still got our work cut out for us. And uh, you see Mario trying to make something happen. I tell you, guys, I'm glad he's starting to get well, and hopefully he'll be back pretty close to full this week. That'll really help our offense take some pressure off. Great catch by Robbie's case. They blew a coverage, and Trey did a good job of coming back to him and finding him. And uh, we're going to just do a little play action fake here, and Jeff Gadouli in the end zone. And Trey does a nice job hitting him for touchdown. And again, this makes it a two touchdown game or a two, two score game again. So everybody on that line sideline thinks we're still going to win this football game against the best team in the conference at this point. Ernest Wilkes making a big tackle. and. Whoa, that, that's, a, this, that's a tough call right there. Uh, they got us for a rough in the punter. And I'll let you make your call. I'll let you look at it and decide, but it, didn't, it looked pretty sketchy. Good job here. Uh, a lot of people at the point of attack. Well, that was the second half highlights brought to you by the Hammond Nursing Home located here in Hammond at 501 Old Covington Highway. Coach, once the game's over, what do you, what do you want the team really to take away from this game? Well, I think that um, having played the team that's a favorite at this point, preseason favorite and favorite at this point to win, um, now we've got to get on a bus and go to Northwestern, a very hostile environment. Uh, uh, they, they really get after it up there, and they're the team you know, that was preseason favorite to give Texas State a run to, to win. So back to back, we're playing two of the top preseason teams. I'm hoping we can draw on the experience of that ball game, the intensity, the aggressiveness, the way we competed right down to the wire. And uh, like I told our team after the ball game, I think we got a really good team. You know, I, I think we're one of the best one and three one AA teams in the country. It's what we do from this point forward. Do we continue to, to build on what we've, the lessons we've learned over the last three weeks? If we hang together, if we believe, if we cut down on them, some of the mistakes. And although I will say they've been aggressive mistakes, trying to make you know, players trying to make plays, you know, not sloppy mistakes, but just aggressive mistakes. But if we learn from it, and we get better in that area, we got to be a little more disciplined. And we had too many penalties the other night, and we're we're still the least penalized team in the league, and I'm proud of that. But you know, we got to play that. That's got to be our style of football: play aggressive, but don't don't shoot ourselves in the foot. If we do that, we're going to be all right. Well, at this point of the show, it brings us to the big play of the week. It's going to be sponsored by State Representative Henry Tank Powell. We have Hutch Gonzalez with two plays this week. He had a big play catching the touchdown in the end zone after a juggling catch, as well as a long drive catch. Let's take a look at Hutch. Well, we're out off the bat. We, uh, Trey gets in some trouble in the pocket here. The pocket's starting to collapse around him, and he scrambles out. And we work on this play. Uh, we work on uh, scramble drill pretty much every day in practice, Coach Hal Smith and our coaches. And Hutch uh, sees it. Uh, Trey's in trouble, and he, can, he really does a good job of continuing to run the route, and Trey just heaves a long bomb, and it drops right into uh, Trey uh, to Hutch's hands. It's a great catch by him here. Next play here, uh, we're trying to hit Jamal. Uh, Trey's trying to hit Jamal in the end zone, and the ball's tipped up in the air. And again, a great effort by Hutch. He's a playmaker. Uh, he sees the ball tip, and he hustles right in, and he makes the catch for a big touchdown, and thank you for the Lord. Well, that was this week's Big Plays of the Week, brought to you by State Representative Henry Tank Powell. A couple big plays there from Hutch Gonzalez. At this point in the show, it's going to bring us to the Player Profile segment. It's going to be sponsored by the Subway Sandwiches located here in the Student Union Mall. We're going to look at defensive lineman Derek Mincy. Let's check it out. Uh, really, Derek Mincy, just a uh, normal person, just 
laid kind of laid back, you know. Uh, young country boy from Toon County, Georgia, you know. Just here, you know, play football, get the job done. Well, you know, it, it's hard work to be down there in the trenches for the entire game. You know, you got you got to go against a lot of 300, 300-pound 300 plus, uh, both, you know what I'm saying, when you get double team, you know, you got probably about 700, 800 pounds leaning on y'all game. But, you know, you just got to get out there and get the job done, get in the way you want to get stronger. You know, I, I, I try to get a little, a little extra work done, you know. I just start a little bit out the, uh, you know, out the practice a little bit, I run a little bit, you know. Like today is like Monday, to, uh, our day off, so, you know, anytime you can get any kind of extra work in, you know, come in and get it, you know, because everybody, everybody in Division One, Division One AA, you know, they do the same workout. If you, you can't even get no, you can't get no better if you're not doing the same thing everybody else does. So you get a little extra workout in, you know what I'm saying, you get better and get to the next level, hopefully. You know, you, like, you know, school come first, you know, athlete playing football and being a student athlete, that all that part comes second. School is the most important thing, you know. Without school, you you can get nowhere. You know, you playing football is a privilege, you know. And um, going to school and battling school with football, you know, it's kind of hard. You got most guys class at eight o'clock in the morning, like mine's at eight. So I get up early in the morning, go to class, then you got football practice in the afternoon. You know, it's kind of kind of hard to balance football and with with classes, but. Uh, Get the job done. We got Coach Rowland back at 100%. You know, he makes sure that we go to class, and get get our work done, and then we come out of football and play hard. You know, uh, get the play in two lane. You know, Coach Lucas always tell you, you know, spread team one of the biggest players in football. You know, we just get out there, we do uh, punt safe. You know, they, they think that the big guys up front that we're not gonna come off the ball and get out to the punt. But you know, the uh, time kid was right. You know, I just got out the ball, got good ball, get off, and just get, got through the line and blocked the punt. Uh, right now, I changed my. I was a kinesiology major, but uh, I changed back to general studies. But uh, my grades, you know, they're pretty good right now. I got a uh, got a 2.5, and uh, I got 21 more hours left in school, so I got my hand on it right there. So I'm hopefully get finished with this semester and hopefully finish up by me. Uh, when, when I when I walk across that stage, you know, it's that's one of my dreams to walk across that stage. I'll be the first one in my immediate family to get a college degree, and, and that's big for me. Not only is it big for me, it's big for my family, you know, that, you know, I came from a, a rough background. To get that college degree, that's, that's important to me. Coming here to Louisiana is a big thing, you know. I made a lot of new friends and, you know, <laughs> not only just on the football team, just around campus, you know. Like, I made myself known, you know. When people see me out in there, I'm at Walmart somewhere, like, hey, that's Derek Mitchell right there. And, you know, that made me feel good that, you know, I'm, I'm a long way from home and people know me by Derek Mason, that made me feel real good. <laughs> you know, a couple of guys on the team, you know, they 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 kind of kid me about that. Yeah, you and Coach Rowland, Coach Rowland, your daddy, y'all both from Georgia, you know. But uh, you know, Coach Rowland's a good man. You know, like most people don't know, without Coach Rowland, I don't believe I'd be here without Coach Rowland, a good lawyer. You know, Coach Rowland recruited me out of high school, and uh, and everything that go go right with me. You know, I went to Middle Georgia College for a little while, and the the program, football program, just quit, and I had to sit out for a while. Coach Rowland just always had me in his uh, had me in his head, in his mind. So he just called my high school coach one day and, and asked about Derek Mitchell. And behold, you know I was home working, and my coach called me and told me Coach Rowland wanted me to come out here. So the first check I got, I got on the bus, came out here with two bags, just two bags of clothes, and now I got it on my own apartment and everything. So everything's going good. Well, that was this week's. Player profile segment looking at defensive lineman Derek Mincy. That's brought to you by Subway Sandwiches located here in the Student Unit Mall. Coach, what does Derek bring to the team? Derek Mincy is uh, a legitimate pro prospect who has worked really hard to, to put himself in this position. He's having a real good senior year. Uh, he's been playing well week in and week out. Uh, I, I, ever since even Northern Colorado, you know, Tulane, and then uh, this past Saturday night, he's playing real well. Very coachable. He wants to help our football team win football games and, and he's trying to be a good positive leader and I've known Derek since he was a sophomore in high school and it's been really exciting to see what the way he's developed uh, both on the field as well as in the classroom he'll graduate I think in December and uh, married uh, just, a, just a fine young man. I know you're glad to have Derek on the team. Very proud of him. Coach this week traveling again this week going to Northwestern State you think the team's really up for traveling again this week? Well I, you know I don't know I, I think that uh, uh, it's been a very dysfunctional year, and uh, we're—I think—we're starting to get in a rhythm of game week. You know, we play, we've had two games now. We're getting ready for a third game in a row, 
and I feel like we're trying to get some rhythm in terms of practice and playing games on Saturday. And uh, I, I think it's going to be really important that we travel well again this week. It'll be an overnight trip. Uh, at this point, it looks like we've got our hotel rooms. And uh, but again, we're homecoming for uh, Northwestern, and uh, they are a, they do it right up there. They're, they've got a really good football team, and um, we got a lot of work to do to get ready to go up there. But uh, you know, again, our players are hungry and they want to be well, do good. And this will be an opportunity for them to uh, bounce back and do it against a good football team. Well, at this point in the show, it brings to the scouting report sponsored by the LHC Group with offices throughout the South. Coach, I know Northwestern in the past has given us uh, trouble in the last couple of years. How do you think we match up to them this year? Well, first of all, on offense, they've got a really good quarterback. He's, uh, he's a lot like the quarterback from Texas State. He's a tall guy that can run and throw. Um, you know, they're always going to be big on the offense. Uh, they're, uh, they're always going to have great athletes and good running backs. And uh, so, they, you know, they, they're going to present some problems for our defense that we're going to really have to, uh, once again, step up and play a really good defensive football game. Their defense, on the other hand, is, is, is really good. They, uh, they're, they're always really athletic. They, they blitz a lot. Uh, they, they show a lot of fronts. They, they bring a lot of coverages. And, uh, you know, they held Sam Houston uh, down to really uh, almost nothing this past week in terms of score. And uh, so we're, we're going to really have our work cut out for us. I think the key for us, again, is for us to draw from our past experiences and just continue to get better. And uh, uh, we've got to have playmakers step up and make plays for us. Well, there you have it, fans. Lions versus Northwestern State. You can check it out this weekend on the Lions Sports Network. Coming back home, we've got McNeese State here at Strawberry Stadium. Don't forget to get your tickets. Coach, I know you're going to be excited to be back at home on that game. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, it's always going to be fun to play in Strawberry Stadium. And, uh, it looks to be a very interesting matchup. Be a home field event for both teams the way it's been going. So uh, we just gotta we just gotta go get Northwestern and then see how we match up. Well, that'll do it for this episode of the Dennis Rowland Show. Don't forget to come back next week. We're gonna check out highlights from that Northwestern State game. Look forward to the McNeese game. For Coach Dennis Rowland, I'm Marv Verboys.